Long Island, New York, a landscape of wealth, power, and influence. But in the midst of this opulence hides one of the most enigmatic figures of modern political finance, Robert Mercer. Born in 1946, Robert Leroy Mercer was far from the political juggernaut he would become. He was the son of a scientist and a seamstress growing up in New Mexico. This was an era of post-war America, filled with dreams of prosperity and opportunity. For Mercer, a deep fascination with computers would soon open doors. In the nascent field of computing, Mercer was a natural. His early forays began with projects in computational linguistics, a field that combines the intricacies of human language with the logical world of machines. Speaking. It's one of the most natural things we do. It's also the basis of a remarkable research project at IBM. This is an experimental computer system that recognizes what I say. By the 1970s, Mercer was pioneering in this realm, making valuable contributions and drawing attention from leading institutions. At the esteemed IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center, Mercer's work laid the foundation for modern machine translation. It was clear that his journey was just beginning. As the financial world of the 1980s boomed, a new opportunity emerged, the world of hedge funds. With his computational prowess, Mercer was poised to redefine the very nature of trading. Renaissance Technologies. This would be Mercer's next frontier, a place where mathematics and finance converged and where Mercer would ascend to new heights. But behind the closed doors of this secretive hedge fund, Mercer wasn't just amassing wealth, he was crafting influence. Join us as we delve deep into the life and influence of Robert Mercer, a journey of finance, politics, and the unseen strings of power. Before delving further into Mercer's financial empire, let's detour into a surprising aspect of his personal life. Model trains. Passion of many, but for Robert Mercer, it's more than a mere hobby, it's an obsession. Trivia, Robert Mercer has one of the largest model train setups in the world, valued at over $2 million. Mercer's collection is not just expansive, but among the most elaborate in the world, a testament to his meticulous nature and penchant for detail. His vast mansion on Long Island isn't just home to his family, but to an intricate network of miniature railways, a controlled world where every detail matters, perhaps mirroring his approach to the real world. In the complex universe of hedge funds, few can claim to harness the mathematical prowess that Mercer brought to Renaissance technologies. While many relied on economic indicators and traditional analysis, Mercer and his team sought patterns hidden deep within numbers. With an approach termed quantitative trading, Renaissance Technologies, particularly its famed medallion fund, began to deliver returns that stunned the industry. Trivia. The medallion fund under the expertise of Mercer and his team has been termed the most successful hedge fund in history. But with growing financial prowess came increasing political interest. As Mercer's wealth grew, so did his influence in realms beyond finance. By the 2010 S, he and his family were among the most significant donors to conservative causes in the U.S., yet Mercer's approach to politics, much like his approach to finance, was unique. Instead of public endorsements or speeches, he wielded his influence quietly, often behind the scenes. In the chapters to come, we'll delve deeper into this hidden influence and the web of political connections Mercer fostered. The path from mathematics genius to political influencer isn't a typical one, yet for Mercer, the allure of ideology and media couldn't be ignored. In an era of information explosion, control over media equates to control over narratives. Trivia. Robert Mercer played a pivotal role in the financial backing of Breitbart News, a platform that would later become influential in American right-wing media. Breitbart News. A name that reverberates through the corridors of American media, known for its controversial and conservative stances, became a nexus of influence. And behind its meteoric rise, Robert Mercer, the alliance between Mercer and Steve Bannon, a key figure at Breitbart, wasn't just about media. It was a partnership that sought to reshape political landscapes away from the public eye. Aboard the luxurious confines of his yacht, the Sea Owl, Mercer entertained intellectuals, politicians, and strategists. These floating meetings, often far from the media's glare, shaped strategies and alliances, Trivia, Mercer's yacht, the Sea Owl, is a custom-built 203-foot mega-yacht, complete with intricate carvings and a sophisticated security system. In this nautical haven, decisions were made, alliances forged, and the next moves in a complex political chess game were planned. As the contentious 2016 U.S. presidential race unfolded, Mercer's influence was palpable. 
The infusion of capital, media leverage, and strategic backing played a significant role in the narratives of the election, but the house on Pennsylvania Avenue was just one piece in a larger puzzle. Mercer's reach extended to think tanks, policy groups, and even the realm of emerging digital technologies. The age of digital data was dawning, and with it, new tools to influence, persuade, and mobilize. And as we'll discover, Mercer wasn't one to be left behind in this digital revolution. In the 21st century, data is often heralded as the new oil. And in this digital age, information, when harnessed correctly, can be more potent than any traditional weapon. Every click, every like, every share, they all contribute to vast digital profiles, profiles that can be analyzed, dissected, and used. Globalization meant that the ripple effects of digital strategies weren't limited to national borders. They were felt worldwide. Enter Cambridge Analytica, a name that would become synonymous with data-driven political campaigns and the controversies surrounding them. Trivia. Robert Mercer was a significant investor in Cambridge Analytica, providing the firm with both financial backing and strategic guidance. With Mercer's backing, Cambridge Analytica touted its ability to influence voter behavior using psychographic modeling. Their claim to not just understand what voters think, but to delve deep into why they think the way they do. In the hands of political campaigns, this was powerful. The ability to craft personalized messages, targeting individuals based on their deepest beliefs and biases was a game changer. But with great power comes great scrutiny. Cambridge Analytica soon found itself at the heart of global controversies. Accusations of unauthorized data harvesting, manipulation, and undue influence over democratic processes came to the fore. For Mercer, a man accustomed to the shadows, the spotlight brought by these scandals was both intense and revealing. But as history shows, controversies often give birth to deeper inquiries and revelations. As governments and institutions grappled with the challenges and implications of digital influence, Mercer's intricate web of investments and alliances became a subject of intrigue and investigation. In the grand tapestry of wealth and power, political contributions are but one thread. For individuals like Mercer, influence extends into the very fabric of culture, arts, media, and education. These domains shape societal narratives, build collective consciousness, and lay the foundations of future thought. A trivia, beyond politics and business, Mercer has been a benefactor for scientific research including a project to revive the extinct passenger pigeon. While Mercer's political interests have been well documented, less known are his investments in the world of science and nature. One such venture was an attempt to bring back the extinct passenger pigeon. A foray into the realms of de-extinction, passenger pigeon once numbering in the billions, vanished from our world over a century ago. Mercer's backing of de-extinction efforts showcases a different facet of his interests, a blend of curiosity, science, and perhaps a hint of playing God. But Robert Mercer wasn't alone in his ventures. His daughter, Rebecca Mercer, emerged as a formidable influence in her own right. Rebecca, with her keen interest in the arts, sciences, and politics, became a torchbearer of the Mercer legacy. Her influence permeated think tanks, nonprofits, and cultural institutions. At the prestigious American Museum of Natural History, Rebecca's presence on the board sparked both acknowledgement of her philanthropic endeavors and debates over the family's political leanings. From traditional media to the brave new world of tech startups, the Mercer's fingerprints could be seen on ventures challenging the mainstream narrative. One such platform, Parler, touted as a free speech alternative to major social media platforms, found support from the Mercer family. In a polarized digital landscape, platforms like Parler reignited debates on free speech, censorship, and the power of tech giants. The groves of academia, places of inquiry, innovation, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Yet within these walls, one can also find the machinations of power and influence. Stony Brook University, New York. Here, Robert Mercer's journey from computer scientist to financial tycoon began. In the early days, Mercer was immersed in groundbreaking research on natural language processing. Attempting to teach machines the intricacies of human language, his work at the university would lay the groundwork for his future endeavors at IBM and subsequently Renaissance Technologies. 
Trivia, Robert Mercer's work at IBM's Thomas J. Watson Research Center led to the development of the Brown Clustering Algorithm, a significant contribution to the world of computational linguistics. The Brown Clustering Algorithm, a byproduct of Mercer's tenure at IBM, was pivotal in enabling computers to understand and categorize large volumes of text data. While linguistics and finance may seem worlds apart, for Mercer, the leap was intuitive. The same pattern recognition and data processing skills that helped machines understand language were repurposed to decode the mysteries of the stock market. At Renaissance Technologies, Mercer and his team's quantitative approach reshaped the way investments were made. Algorithms, data, and patterns took precedence over gut feelings and traditional analysis. While many Wall Street giants reveled in their overt displays of power and prestige, Renaissance remained enigmatic, its silence echoing its strength. Away from the algorithms and numbers, Mercer's personal world was one of contrasts. The man who reveled in complexity also sought solace in simpler, often eclectic pursuits. Behind the enigmatic facade of the financier and influencer is a man of diverse interests and curiosities. Robert Mercer's personal world is as intricate and varied as his professional one. His residence, a sprawling property in Head of the Harbor, Long Island, offers glimpses into his passions and eccentricities. Model trains, not just a childhood pastime for Mercer, but an enduring fascination. His elaborate train setup, one of the largest privately owned systems in the U.S., is testament to his love for precision and detail. Trivia, Robert Mercer's passion for model trains led him to file a lawsuit against a company over a train set dispute, showcasing his commitment to the hobby. And such is Mercer's dedication to this hobby that he once got embroiled in a legal dispute over a train set. It might seem trivial to some, but for Mercer, it was a matter of principle and perfection. Guns, for some a symbol of power and protection for others a work of art. Mercer's extensive gun collection is a meld of history, craftsmanship, and personal sentiment. Art and sculpture find a special place in Mercer's heart. His garden, adorned with hand-carved wooden statues, reveals a penchant for craftsmanship and an appreciation for the timeless beauty of wood. Books, numismatics, antiques, each element of Mercer's collection narrates a story, revealing layers of a man often hidden behind headlines and controversies but amidst all the collectibles and curiosities, the true essence of Mercer's personal life is rooted in his family. His daughters, in particular, have played pivotal roles not just in continuing his legacy, but in forging their own paths. Rebecca Mercer, the most visible of his daughters, mirrors her father's multifaceted persona. Her ventures into politics, philanthropy, and entrepreneurship are stories unto themselves. In the corridors of influence, where politics, business, and media converge, one finds individuals who, while not always in the limelight, exert significant control over the levers of power. In the world of high-stakes philanthropy and political fundraising, the Mercers, particularly Rebecca, have made their mark. Trivia, Rebecca Mercer once described herself as a radical in an op-ed, highlighting her desire to challenge the status quo. Embracing the term radical, Rebecca's voice and vision were clear. She sought to challenge established narratives and paradigms, making her both a revered ally and a formidable adversary. Her influence was palpable not just in the decisions she made, but also in the alliances she forged. One such alliance was with Steve Bannon, a pivotal figure in the conservative media landscape and later in the political arena. Their collaboration would catalyze movements and shape narratives. Breitbart News, a platform that prided itself on being unapologetically right-wing, found staunch supporters in the Mercers. Their financial backing and strategic insights propelled Breitbart to new heights. The tides of American politics were shifting, the rise of the Tea Party, the 2016 electoral shakeup, and the surge of populist sentiments all bore the subtle imprints of the Mercer influence. But their reach wasn't limited to media. With the power of data analytics, exemplified by firms like Cambridge Analytica, the Mercers could not only gauge public sentiment but potentially steer it. Such influence, however, is a double-edged sword. With the power to unify came the potential to polarize. The Mercers, for all their strategic acumen, were not immune to criticisms, controversies, and challenges. In the ever-shifting sands of power dynamics, where do the Mercers truly stand? Benefactors of a new age or puppeteers behind the curtain? The quest for clarity continues. In the intricate web of politics and power, every player has moments of introspection, times when they must grapple with their beliefs, actions, and the consequential ripples they send through society. 
Robert Mercer, despite his reserved nature, was no exception. His influence had ignited revolutions, but it had also sparked controversies. Cambridge Analytica, with its data-driven approach to political strategy, found itself in the eye of a storm. Accusations of manipulating public sentiment and allegations of privacy breaches put both the company and its backers under scrutiny. The media landscape was ablaze with debates and discussions. The once revered tools of data science under Mercer's umbrella were now objects of skepticism and critique. Trivia. Robert Mercer initially had ties with Ted Cruz's campaign during the 2016 U.S. presidential primaries, but later shifted support to Donald Trump. In the unpredictable theater of American politics, Mercer's affiliations too evolved. Originally a supporter of Ted Cruz during the 2016 presidential primaries, he later pivoted, throwing his weight behind Donald Trump. 2016 U.S. presidential election was a watershed moment. As Donald Trump clinched victory, the world looked on with a mix of astonishment and analysis. We need somebody that can take the brand of the United States and make it great again. It's not great again. And in the shadows, the Mercer's strategic influence became a topic of both admiration and inquiry. Was it simply a populist wave? Or was it a masterstroke of data analytics, media strategy, and financial might? The quest for answers pulled the Mercer's further into the spotlight. Yet, even amidst the crescendo of debates and discussions, Robert Mercer retained his enigmatic aura always present yet perpetually elusive. As the tapestry of influence, politics and power unfolds, the line between architect and architecture blurs. What's next in the saga of Robert Mercer, the silent architect, dare to delve deeper? Sometimes the most impactful figures are not just anchored to the terrestrial. Their gaze often extends beyond the confines of our blue planet, reaching out into the mysteries of the cosmos. Space, the final frontier a realm that has sparked human curiosity for ages. And for Robert Mercer, it wasn't just about the vastness above, it was also about the science that underpins it. Trivia. Robert Mercer's interest in science led him to financially support the SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Program. Beyond politics and finance, Mercer's support extended to the SETI program, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, a testament to his unwavering fascination with the mysteries of the universe. Imagine the possibility signals from a distant civilization, a whisper from a far-off galaxy decoded here on Earth. Mercer's investment in SETI was more than just financial. It was a nod to human ingenuity and the undying quest for knowledge. Science and technology weren't mere sidelines for Mercer. They were integral to his journey, from his early days at IBM to his deep dives into algorithmic trading. But as with every venture, the interplay of science and society carries its own challenges. The same algorithms that brought prosperity can also prompt questions about ethics, privacy, and the very nature of human decision-making. In a world rapidly embracing AI, where do we draw the line between machine intelligence and human intuition? How do we balance progress with prudence? Questions that, directly or indirectly, were linked to the Mercer legacy. For a man who harnessed the power of numbers and algorithms, the cosmic and the computational were two sides of the same coin a duality that defined his persona. To understand a man, one often looks to his sanctuaries, places where he retreats, reflects, and recharges. For Robert Mercer, Owl's Nest was such a haven. Located on Long Island's North Shore, this estate provided Mercer an escape from the bustling epicenter of finance and politics. Trivia. Robert Mercer's yacht, named Sea Owl, is a testament to his love for privacy and intricate details with customized wood carvings and sophisticated security systems. And, moored not too far away, the Sea Owl Mercer's private yacht, a vessel that is not just a testament to his financial success, but also his penchant for detail and security. Beyond its luxurious facade, the Sea Owl was equipped with state-of-the-art security systems, perhaps indicative of Mercer's desire for both privacy and protection. But Owl's Nest wasn't just about seclusion. It was also a space of union, a place where the Mercer family gathered, bonded, and built memories. Behind the veil of influence and affluence, Robert Mercer, in many ways, was a family man, a father, a grandfather, and within the confines of Owl's Nest, the patriarchal figure often took precedence over the financier. And as one delves deeper into his sanctuary, Mercer's love for knowledge becomes evident. A personal library, 
replete with books spanning various subjects, stands as a testament to his voracious appetite for learning. Such personal spaces often reveal facets of an individual that the public rarely witnesses. They shed light on passions, pursuits, and the softer, subtler sides of a personality. New York, the financial heart of the world, where fortunes are made and legacies are built, and within this complex matrix, a particular entity stands out. Renaissance Technologies, founded in 1982 by James Simons, Renaissance Technologies is nothing short of a legend in the world of quantitative finance. Its medallion fund, in particular, has achieved almost mythical status due to its extraordinary returns. Robert Mercer joined the firm in 1993, and it didn't take long for him to become a pivotal figure. His prowess in mathematics and algorithms, coupled with his deep understanding of language processing, became instrumental in furthering the firm's edge. Trivia. Renaissance Technologies Medallion Fund is renowned for its astounding performance, often averaging returns above 35% after fees. The Medallion Fund's performance is the stuff of Wall Street legends. Year after year, even when the financial markets were in turmoil, the fund often posted returns exceeding 35% after fees. In the unpredictable world of finance, where giants can stumble and economies can quake, the consistent success of the Medallion Fund was both an enigma and an emblem of brilliance. Under the roof of Renaissance, the boundaries between finance and science blurred. Here, PhD mathematicians rubbed shoulders with experts in artificial intelligence. Algorithms were their tools and data their playground. As James Simon stepped back from the firm's day-to-day -day operations, leadership passed on to Mercer and Peter Brown. Together they carried forward the legacy, ensuring that Renaissance remained at the zenith of quantitative finance. Yet for all its success, Renaissance was often described as the Fort Knox of finance, a fortress of secrets, its strategies, algorithms, and methodologies zealously guarded. The alchemy of algorithms and finance, the confluence of computation and commerce, is a story as intriguing as it is inspiring. And at the heart of it all, Robert Mercer played a role that is both celebrated and scrutinized. But what mysteries lie beyond the numbers? Language, a cornerstone of human civilization, a medium of expression, a tool for understanding. For Robert Mercer, language was not just about communication. It was a challenge, a puzzle to be decoded. Before his ascent in the financial realm, Mercer's tryst with language took form at IBM. Here, at the Thomas J. Watson Research Center, he delved deep into the world of natural language processing. Natural language processing, or NLP, is the intersection of computer science and linguistics. It seeks to teach machines how to understand, interpret, and generate human language. Trivia. Robert Mercer's work at IBM led to the development of the Brown Clustering Algorithm, which remains influential in the field of NLP. Mercer's contribution to this field was seminal. His work at IBM culminated in the development of the Brown Clustering Algorithm, a technique that has left a lasting impact on the world of NLP. The Brown algorithm clusters words based on their mutual information, identifying patterns and associations within vast textual data sets. It was a breakthrough, offering new avenues for machine translation, speech recognition, and information retrieval. Hey Siri, read me my unread emails. Princess has sent you an email about life-changing opportunity if you please it says i have a once in a line alexa how tall is mount everest mount everest's height is 29,029 feet 8,848 meters from the early often comedic misinterpretations of voice activated devices we have transitioned to today's sophisticated ai assistants understanding and conversing with us and the foundation for such leaps groundbreaking research like Mercer's. While the world often associates Mercer with finance and politics, in scientific circles he celebrated for his contributions to computational linguistics, a testament to the depth and diversity of his intellect. The heart of America, a land of dreams, aspirations, and diverging beliefs. As the country grappled with changing political landscapes, a new wave was forming, and Robert Mercer found himself at its epicenter, politics a domain where influence is both wielded and sought after. And in the early 21st century, a shift was palpable. Outside the conventional corridors of power, new players were emerging, 
changing the calculus of American politics. Enter Breitbart News, a platform that prided itself on being unapologetically right-wing. Its rise in popularity mirrored the burgeoning influence of alternative media in shaping public opinion. Trivia. Robert Mercer and his daughter Rebecca played a significant role in financing and supporting Breitbart News, furthering its reach and influence. Behind the scenes, Robert Mercer and his daughter Rebecca were instrumental in bolstering Breitbart's growth. Their financial backing and strategic input were pivotal in steering the platform to its prominent position. But Mercer's political endeavors didn't stop at media. His investment in Cambridge Analytica, a data analytics firm, was a testament to his belief in the power of data-driven political campaigning. Cambridge Analytica leveraged data to craft bespoke political campaigns, targeting voters with precision. In a world increasingly driven by algorithms and big data, politics was no exception. Yet with innovation came scrutiny. Questions arose about data privacy, the ethical implications of voter manipulation, and the very fabric of democratic processes. The interplay of technology and politics was under the microscope. For Mercer, these endeavors were not merely investments. They reflected a vision, an ideology. But as with all things powerful, they were double-edged, capable of both revolutionizing and destabilizing. In the intricate dance of power and influence, Robert Mercer emerged as a formidable choreographer. But every step, every move, carried consequences. Are we prepared to delve deeper into this dance? Thank you for joining us on this journey into the life and legacy of Robert Mercer. His story, intricate and multifaceted, is a reflection of our times, our challenges, and the intricate web of influence that shapes our world. If you found this exploration enlightening, please give us a like. And to continue unraveling such intriguing narratives, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Every story, every episode, seeks to enlighten, engage, and empower. Join us as we delve deeper, one story at a time. Until next time.